Hello everyone, welcome to the Self-Publishing Roundtable, episode number 17, the weekly news show that tells you everything you need to know about what's going on in self-publishing and a whole heap of stuff that you probably don't. I'm your host, Carl Sinclair, and as always, I'm joined by David W. Wright, John Ward, and Bill Dowis. Uh, there's no Wade or Chrissy this week. How are you guys? I'm what great, are... now that those bastards aren't here. <laughs> Well, it is slightly suspicious that Chrissy couldn't make it because she had a date, and then all of a sudden Wade pulled out. Uh, so I'm, not, I'm not making any assumptions here. Well, he didn't pull out yet. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> well, what a strong start. <clears throat> What's been going on? Uh, I don't know. You tell us. <laughs> You know, give you oh, conversation? Like, oh, okay. You know, what, what's been going on? Oh, I, I've been writing this week. Uh, you know, absolutely nothing. My, you know, it's always the same. I'm writing and I'm writing and I write some writing more. And, writing and ranting. That should be the name of your blog. Yes. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm getting sick of people ranting. <laughs> well, I know. It's ironic. <laughs> It's lucky that's not a whole part of one of your like many podcasts. Then. Yeah, I'm sick of myself. <laughs> well, let's I, I want to be what positive. About guys, what about you, live viewers? Are you sick of David W. Wright? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> An overwhelming you, uh, yes. You got a link for this thing so I can send it out? <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's in the uh, chat window. I don't see it. I see one item in chat. <clears throat> Thank you. There we go. All right. So, what about you, uh, John? What have you been up to this week? Anything interesting? I've been chasing my daughter around on her uh, school field trip today. Fantastic. Fun. <laughs> exciting. <laughs> How old is your daughter? Six. And what was the field trip? To the nature preserve which, from what I could tell, is just a big force, you know. I could have taken her in the backyard and done the same thing. <laughs> Look at the birds in their native environment in our backyard. <laughs> the yellow-bellied finch is on our swing set. No, it was kind of cool. They got to see an, an owl and a bald eagle and wolves. And um, in your backyard, you have wolves? Awesome. Kind of like a trip to your basement. <laughs> As long as they didn't see wolves. There's bald. never bald eagles in my basement. <laughs> the wolves usually eat them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Bill, what about you? We Same haven't had stuff. much from you lately. Just running, mostly. Any mostly marathons? running. Uh, next month, Philadelphia Marathon. So, I've been training hard for that. <laughs> That's good news. All right. <laughs> Well, the first story up is uh, about self-publishing growing again, as usual. And that's actually one of Bill's stories, so I'm just going to make him do all the work for a while. Off you go. Well, <laughs> well, you, you know what? This, I did, I know. I, just, I don't know what I was thinking. I, the link that I found actually had like three sentences, and then it made you sign up and log in to read the rest. But it gave you the gist of it. it said, Did you uh, sign in to read the rest? <laughs> no. Oh. <my> God. <laughs> no. <laughs> because you know what? The, the important what a professional part, show the, we're running here. The important part is right there. It says that Bowker says that um, in 2013 or 2012, self-published books number 391,000 titles, which is up from 235,000 in 2011. Wait. But that only includes books with ISBN numbers, so the numbers are even larger than that. Can I interrupt a moment? Yeah. Sure. Um, I just did. Out of 391,000, I think it's fair to point out that 127,000 of those are Garrett Robinson titles. <laughs> <laughs> Realm Keepers, Episode Realm 1, Keeper. Special Edition with the alternate variant covers. He was worrying in the comments that he wouldn't have an opportunity to mention his books tonight, so he I wanted to get that out there. He mentioned Chrissy or Wade. No one was going to shill his books for him. So. <laughs> and I still didn't get my book, man. So much for sending it. Like, U.S. Post oh, Office no. sucks. 
I haven't got much either. <laughs> Nobody's got their books. <laughs> I don't believe these the books Brown exist. <laughs> Zach's this running around the country. With, this, yeah, this is all a scam. Just Zach's taking running around the country with a copy of a single book saying, here, hold this, don't take your picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's can why I, Zach's can I, not... Can I give this to your kid and take his picture with it? <laughs> That's why Zach's not in the comments, because he's like hand-delivering a book and then taking it back. <laughs> He's like, you had the book for a minute. It's the only one we got. Um, all that, right, was so that was a great story. That was a great <laughs> story. Do I dare um, open up the second story that Bill posted? Did you, is, this <laughs> than, is this more than three lines? In the, well, in the yeah, yeah I think so. Publishing? I think so. They're, they're saying how like the, um, the indie... The indie revolution is fueling traditional publishing because now you know traditional publishers are are going out and recruiting writers that are already already have an audience and already have an audience built, and the, like the big publishers aren't hurting for money. You know they aren't hurting to find people to publish. Are yeah, is that the entire that's... article, or did you have to sign in for the rest of it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I no, but you know what? You know what I really hate is the websites that say sign in using your Facebook if you want to view this website. No, back button. Yeah, I hate that too. Yeah. <clears throat> Bill never actually finishes any of the articles. He just reads the headline and the captions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good enough. I pay somebody else to read them for me. I'm like, just just summarize these. <laughs> just slap them up here. And that and that's why viewers tune in for this <laughs> in depth coverage of self publishing. <laughs> You're paying other people to write, read the articles. I've please? already. You're rolling around that David Wright money. <laughs> Dude, I've I've already given you more news than my local news gives me every night. Yeah, Minus so the, the fear mongering. <laughs> yeah. Dave, Dave's got even more money. He pays someone to read the articles, and then he pays someone else to summarize what the person who read the article did. You know, got like, we should got like too deep. We should just start paying people to write news articles, and then no, no, we'll, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> then, we'll, then we'll be like Garrett paying people to write reviews. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Oh. Uh, wow! Does you he do that? Alleg <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. You gotta write. You gotta say allegedly. I didn't think he does that. Kind of yeah, that's allegedly. I don't want to be sued for oh, okay. slander or libel. Does it? Does it count though? If you're paying in sexual favors. <laughs> I think that counts. Does it ever? Do you have to file <laughs> that on your taxes? Sexual favors. And how do you report that as income? And how do you give twenty percent or thirty percent to the <laughs> government? <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, the government's already screwing us, so they're getting more than their 30%. There we go. Do you guys even have a government anymore? I thought they just closed up. They were just like, we're done. They're closed for business. <laughs> they're like they're like teenage girls. Work. They stomp this up into the room. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, a whole other anything, show. Is there actually anything in this article that we need to, um, that anyone has anything to say? Uh, anything about it's kind of obvious news to me. Sorry, Bill. No. Oh, uh, <laughs> God damn it. See, well, see it's, it, 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 it wasn't a whole lot of public. great news in this week's though. Nah, that's it, was kind of, it was kind of thin. Really. Or we just missed all the good news. No, I, don't, I just don't think. We, well, yeah, maybe. Maybe no one actually bothered to look. We were all um, busy running and writing <laughs> and chasing our daughters around. Or whatever it is Carl does over there in Australia. Yeah, pretty much the same. Just chasing girls around. Holding um, on, trying not to fall off the earth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in the future and nothing gets better, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, okay, well, I think the next one was posted by Wade, but it's being that he's on a date with Chrissy. Um, it's, uh, Are self-published authors really authors or even published by Dr. Jim Taylor? Um, I think there might be some talk about this one. Uh of the 14 books he's written, uh, uh, of the 14 books I've written which have been self-published with ready admission that I couldn't <clears> find a traditional publisher publish them because they're decidedly niche nature. I'm just going to read the uh, whole article. Oh, my like, God. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone follow oh, no, I, along. I quit follow this show. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go back to Bill reading the caption and the title? Holy crap. <laughs> I'm not really going to. Um... 
Yeah, basically. It's just going to seem like it. <laughs> <laughs> He's basically just, um, you know, suggesting that... Um, what, what I took, that are you really are you really published if you self-publish? The old, are you really a, a, an author kind of deal. Yeah, and this is this is the guy that says when somebody tells them they're a writer, he's, his first question is, who's your publisher? So your instead mama. Of, instead of asking about the book or the writing, he says, who's your publisher? Yeah, that doesn't sound elitist at all. Yeah. Uh, he, he does make exceptions. I actually read the article. He does make exceptions uh, and, and apologies for his uh, s stupid comments, um, basically saying, you know, it's perfectly all right if you're self-published, but, you know, he, he, he basically tries to play both sides of the fence here, uh, you know, kind of, you know, looking down his nose at people that are self-published while at the same time acknowledging that, you know, some of them have done very well. Uh, but generally he's just shitting all over self-publishing in general and saying most people don't do very well, most self-publishing sucks. Um, so. He, uh, <coughs> he talked about uh, Amanda Hocking and E.L. James. And, and that's the only two he knows. <laughs> well, did you notice that... He didn't other name guys, a whole lot of people. There's, there's no Hugh Howie in there. And, like, that's usually how you start any article in self-publishing. Yeah. There's one time when Hugh Howie did it. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that what people just do? But so, I don't know. He yeah. He didn't seem to get that much. There wasn't a, I couldn't see that there was any comments uh, that were really that. No, everybody attacked him pretty much. Uh, I think all of the... Yeah, the I think it was on much. HuffPo. Most people yeah. were, are self-published writers on HuffPo that are in the comments section. Yeah. And there was they're like, fuck you, man. Yeah, go fuck yourself, doctor. It, it, so the question is, can you call yourself a writer? And, and unless you're not. a professionally publisher, can you call yourself an author? You call yourself a writer. Can you call yourself an author if you're not professionally published? And uh, I think it depends. You know, I mean, who, who's judging? Uh, personally, I my my own level is I would not call myself a writer unless I was making money at it. Um, that's my thing. Uh, or See, I always felt, because when I was doing comics, I, I did comics for like 10 years, and I didn't make money till the last few years, and there was barely any money at that. Uh, so I, I didn't feel you know, comfortable when people would say, oh, you're a cartoonist? I'd be like, well, you know, not, not really. I'm not making a living at it until I was eventually, you know, a paid cartoonist. So um, I, don't, I, I can understand, uh, but, but I think it's basically, you know, how you refer to yourself and what you feel comfortable with. I think everybody's bar might be a little bit different, but I don't think you should have to subject yourself to what other people think of you. And I would guarantee that a lot of self-published people are making a hell of a lot more than most authors are making. If you if you take a random sampling of a thousand published authors and a thousand self-published authors, there's a good chance the self-published ones are making more. Yeah, that's usually the case. I don't, I, I don't know how factual it is, but I, I remember... No, I just pulled that out of my ass, but, you know, it's a feeling. Well, I actually... <laughs> I remember reading an article a while ago that apparently there was only something like 100 or 150 tradition, like solely traditionally published authors. That's all they do. There's no other income stream that can actually claim to make a, a real living from fiction. And I know more than that self-published. Yeah. Exactly. In self-published so, writers. And personally, like, I could, you know, contact these people. I know them. You know, it's not some, like, arbitrary number. Yeah. No, well, there was, um, there was a few posts on the Kindle boards a while ago listing... Getting uh, all the self-published authors that were um, making a living to post, and there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Um, there certainly is an argument that self-published authors, like you said, are actually making more money than the traditional people are. Obviously, there's the big, big, huge names, but for the most part, traditionally published authors aren't really doing that much money at all. So there, there is a certain elite elitism among people that. You know, they they just want to shit all over anybody that's not a quote professional. Um, I don't know. I I don't give a fuck what those people say. 
And they also make the com there was a comment on that article uh, from I, I, I believe it was the article author who said only a small percentage, very small percentage of self-published authors make a living. But you know what the same could be said for people who published yeah. traditional publishers. I mean, going yeah. to going to Barnes and Noble, look how many different authors there are. You tell me, every single one of them make a living solely by writing books. Yeah, it it. it the, the percent I, I I would love to know the percentages. Um, it, it it would be interesting because you know there are a just a shit ton of people that are self published, and you know percentage wise, how many of those people are making a living at it? I don't know. It it might be a small number, uh, but I don't think the number for published authors is going to be a whole lot larger percentage wise, and it might be smaller. And you also got to look at the number of self-published authors who are actually trying to make a living at it. You know, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people who have stuff out there who either they don't care and they don't want to make a living, they just want to put stuff out there, or they put stuff out there and then they just stop. They just forget about it. Yeah. I, I think enough people have, have made a living at this and are making a living at it and have been signed to professional deals that, that self-publishing is legitimate. It's not something that some professor should be looking down his nose at. So, and I believe the responses in that article kind of, you know, set them straight. Garrett Robinson uh, has posted, here's a great quote, forget who said it, um, you know the difference between a writer and an author? Question mark. An author is a writer who didn't give up. It's probably his quote. I think Hitler said that. <laughs> uh, we have a few people in the comments. Let's have a look. See what's oh, going damn on. Damn time. Someone. Get some <laughs> get some content on this show. Mary uh, Mary pointed out that my voice is low and sexy, and then she kept writing something, but I stopped reading at that point. Um, <laughs> and there's like a whole conversation going on about how you're very hedgehog-like for some reason. <laughs> Sonic Wright, they're now calling you, so... Sonic, I'm wow, sure. okay. My son will be happy to hear that. All, I think that goes back to the... Uh, Where the are these comments at? Right? On the website? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm looking on the YouTube, and there's, like, no comments. Okay. I'm in the wrong place. But you got called out as being a cute, cute like a little hedgehog. Was it on the self-publishing podcast last week? And now it seems to have... Like, yeah, by Ari uh, Lessier's... I think I'm yeah, saying your name. Yeah, she's now watching us, too. Yeah, she is. So there you go. So I am a hedgehog. Awesome. <laughs> a cute hedgehog. I guess it, there's worse animals to me. I always thought of myself more as a porcupine. <laughs> but it's, uh, a little bristly. Yes. What, uh, okay, well, what, what animal would Garrett be? Garrett would be what, a mongoose. A wily fox? Mongoose. <laughs> He's long and skinny. <laughs> and weasel. All righty. <laughs> All righty. The, uh, <clears throat> the next story is from our good friend John Ward. Google patents. Oh, we're not going to talk about animal resemblance anymore? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can. We'll come back to it when we run out of the other three stories. Uh, yeah, um, we'll be out real <laughs> soon. <laughs> virtual book clubs. Tell us about it, John. Okay. Google Finally, is... somebody that actually reads the articles. <laughs> <laughs> Google filed for a patent to um, create virtual book clubs so that whenever you purchase a book, that it will prompt you to join an online community um, devoted to discussing that book. And it will also filter out um, that recommendation so that you're joining community around people who purchased it around the same time as you. So you're not going to get someone who's just finished it three weeks ago and um, they're writing all these spoilers and you're going to join the club with people who are reading it and they're about in the same place as you. Um, How the hell are they going to manage that? Through the uh, Google Bookstore is the... Thinking behind it. I mean, no, no, no. How are they going to know? You know, some people read a book in a day, and other people, or most people, probably in a week or two. 
Okay. Um, from the or are pat- they tracking where you are in the book, and then they kick you out of the club? You're too far ahead. No, the patent made it sound like they're making that decision based off of your purchase date. So if you wait six months to read the book, <laughs> then um, I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah, I, I never read a book right away. Yeah. I'm well, looking forward a- to starting yesterday's <laughs> going season two. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, when I read it, I was thinking that, you know, this is another little step towards Google building towards trying to get more serious about the publishing and the book stuff. I mean, they, they redid their site a while ago. Was that like a month ago? They're painting and stuff like this. They're obviously paying some attention to it. I would think that they're putting the pieces in place towards taking a crack at trying to get some market share, I would think. It'll have to be better than Amazon's forums for books. Yeah, well, the Kindle boards are pretty popular. So. Well, not the Kindle boards. The the boards uh, on the product page, like when you oh, look yeah, at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's quite when a bit you, of when you look at them, they, they they don't they don't show in the right sequence. It's just very unwieldy. So anything anything that can you know get people together that are reading your book is pretty damned awesome. Especially if the author gets you know to be involved in it if they want. So yeah, awesome. All right, um, that's your show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the animal thing. Uh, Garrett, thinks, <laughs> Garrett thinks he would be a chihuahua. Um, I don't like chihuahuas. <laughs> um, well, not many people like Garrett, so... <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> wow. I'm kidding. I would, I would disagree uh, <laughs> with that. I'm kidding. Garrett is beloved. Um, beloved Garrett author, is... <laughs> Garrett Robinson. <laughs> beloved author slash chihuahua. Uh, Nick Kale said, are evil. <clears throat> Nick Kale said Garrett's a meerkat. <laughs> I, think I can picture that. Mark. Yeah. Well, this has been enthralling. Someone said a red lobster. I'm not sure who that is. You. I don't know. What? Okay. Well, what would John You'd be Ward a marsupial? Be? Uh, people in the comments. There's 18 people in there. <laughs> what There's 18 people Ward watching be? this shit. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Apparently so. Um, all right, we'll move on. This is an actual interesting story. Joe Conrad's sales numbers he posted this week. This was from Dave, so I'll let you talk about it first. But I had a good read of all of the stuff that's going on. I looked pretty closely at his numbers. So, uh, Joe basically, uh, you know, posted an article with advice. Um, uh, some of those things were love what you're doing, uh, write what you can, finish what you write, edit what you finish, shall publish what you edit and repeat, um, experiment, you should seek out as much information as you can, but don't believe everything you hear or read. Uh, that, that That's good for all people paying attention to shows like ours. Uh, ebooks are forever. That means you have a very long time to find your audience. If you're not seeing success now, it doesn't mean it won't ever come. Work your ass off. Seek criticism, not praise. Ignore haters, they're not worth your time. Uh, <clears throat> Joe says, with only a few exceptions, he's found that advertising, publicity, and promotion uh, do not help much. Uh, the problem is, though, that they sometimes do help, and it's very hard to predict when that will happen. Uh, he tweets, emails, and uh, blogs about new releases. He uses BookBub, Book Blast, and eBook Booster every so often. And he does a rare interview or appearance once in a blue moon. But most of all, he focuses on his writing. And looking at the number of books he has, you know, that's pretty, you know, you, you, you can tell. The dude writes a lot. Uh, his motto, uh, learn all you can, pass along what you've learned, leave the world a better place because you lived and have as much fun as possible. So uh, he gets eventually, people have been asking him, you know, how much he's been making. Uh, because he posted his numbers in 2009. Um, in 2009, one of his first posts on this, uh, so far in Kindle, he'd earned $2,781.35 in 64 days. Um, if that trend kept up, uh, he figured he'd make $32,850 a year. Not a huge amount, but not chump change either. And probably... a enough for a lot of people to, to live on, or at least, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, he sh- but he shares his numbers, and I, I found the numbers interesting, and I, I've noticed his a lot of his titles have been selling less 
uh, in the past year or two. I think 2011 was, was really his time, and a lot of them are selling less this year than before, it seems. And I, I find that very interesting. But the thing is... And still I still made I, a crap load of money this year. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, but and I think the thing is, it, it is you know the 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 ebook boom and you know how you were able to find success uh, has changed a lot. Uh, KDP Select doesn't work as well as it once did, at least at the moment. They might change again, uh, but he's proving here that some of his titles are you know still making great money, uh, but he's proving that having a lot of titles and you know having an audience uh, is is really the way to, to sustain yourself. Uh, since 2011, well, his, wait, I'm sorry, since 2009, uh, his grand total is uh, 1.5 million. So that's what he's yeah. made. Now, I didn't break it down year by year to see how much he's made each I year. Did. Oh, you did? That's awesome, a, okay. It's about an average um, of... Anywhere between five and five hundred and fifty thousand. So he's pretty stable. This year alone, he's made just over five hundred thousand. Yeah, that's October. good. Um, now, some of those books are contributing significantly more. I think one of them had done a hundred k this year, um, mm -hmm. and there was quite a few around the fifteen to twenty to thirty k books. Um, a lot of them were doing like you know anywhere between a few hundred up to. You know, a few thousand up to four or five thousand, but that's all adding up. If you look at how many books he's actually got out, that's the answer. It's, you know, yes, he's going to have one or two books that are killing it at any one point, probably newer releases, but that backlist, even though it's not doing stellar numbers, it's still bringing in a few thousand a year. Each book, and he's got like how many books up there? Like, it was about. I'm trying to odd, count. There's a lot, though. There was 50 odd, um, and that includes even ridiculous things like his Dr. Hans Uberas books that he was putting out and <laughs> while they're only making a couple of hundred dollars like they're still making money like, um, and then and that is the answer I mean David Wright's got 9,000 books out so <laughs> I'm not sure I'm not sure how many millions you've made but um, uh, that, we haven't made nearly this much uh, we need to get uh, writing more <laughs> but that's that, that, that is the answer that backlist you know for every new release he comes out yes the new releases are doing well um, and some of them exceedingly well, but he's still selling those backlist books that are still bringing in that extra money. That's why it's, the numbers are so high. It's not because of one particular book. It's that, you know, books even from that come out, you know, 2009 are still pulling in between like one and 5,000 a year, which is, which is good. Now, do you think it would be fair to call him an author and to say that he's been published? <laughs> well, he actually has been published. He actually published. was, yeah. He was, but otherwise, he otherwise, he's just a pretender. Even though he's made, you know, three million or whatever, he made or not, one a, million um, five. <laughs> that didn't include his legacy published books or his secret um, pen name either. So he's making more than that. So I don't know. I mean, it's it's a fairly good indication that uh, you know to keep writing, keep publishing, keep at it, um, and. You know, there is no time limit on becoming successful. It could all take off at any one point. Look at Hugh Howie. Wall was, I think, his eighth book out, wasn't it? His ninth book. Um, I don't know. And if you, I think it was, and um, he he hadn't done particularly well by you know what most people were classed as um, successful by at that point. And then Wall obviously took off. And yes, that sold a crap load of books. But if you look at his backlist. Um, Molly Pride and some of the other stuff that he's got. Vide. Vide, sorry. Um, those those books, should, uh, you know, for most of the time are still pretty low in the Kindle store. I've never read any of them, but someone is. Like, people are. Um, and I'm sure he's making a, a fair bit of money off of the backlist as he, as he is the big series like Wall, same as Joe. So that's the answer. Just keep publishing. You know, I am... Um, it's been months ago, and... I can't remember the data right now, but I did an um, anecdotal study of different authors who had broken through and you know connected with an audience. And it seems like about the seventh or eighth book is, is typically when authors find that audience and start to resonate with a large group of people. Um, and I used to have a list of about 
12 names, but I can't remember them all right now. But Yu Howie was one of those in there that you mentioned, because that was his eighth book, I think. Wool was. Um, but it'd be interesting to go back and try to pinpoint that information. And self-publishers, self-publishing authors, they'll tell you, the ones who've made it through um, and built that audience. Hmm, that's interesting. I'll have to think about contacting a bunch of people and finding out when they um, felt like they connected with a group of people. I would say we started connecting on the third book we wrote, uh, the Yesterday's Gone Season 2, I think. See, but if you're in Season 2, that would have been, what, your seventh release? Yeah, I see, I don't know if you'd count each of the episodes as a release or not, because uh, it is part of an ongoing book, so I don't know. I mean, if you stacked, you know, Yesterday's Gone up against, you know, somebody else's book, then it would be like a book for book. It wouldn't be like, oh, we wrote, you know, six books compared to their one because of the length. Yeah, but look at Wool. I mean, Wool, the first volume of Wool is 13,000 words. His other and, books, though, they were longer. Yeah, yeah but that's true. Rest, uh, yeah, they were. But Wool was Wool's essentially a serial, just not. But the you'll same find a lot of self-published you. authors who are releasing in the thirty and forty thousand word range, um, as compared to the minimum of seventy, eighty thousand for a traditionally published book. Yeah, I I think a lot of it has to do with uh, you know how often people see your name on the lists uh, on the also bots on Amazon. I think uh, I I know a lot of people, Hugh Howie and us. Uh, shared a lot of audience, I think, in the in the early days before he took off and just sold more than God. Uh, but but I saw like all the time we'd be on each other's lists, and that's how I knew Hugh Howie because you know, our readers were also reading him, and sometimes I'd even email, "Hey, have you read Hugh Howie's stuff?" And uh, so I think there's a lot to that as well. Uh, so I, the more stuff you have out there, and the better it does, then the more people are going to see your name and more people will take a chance on you, and that builds. So, yeah, okay, seven books sounds good. <laughs> um, well, uh, Ed's, uh, Ed Robertson's Breakers series is doing pretty well now. Do you know um, you know Ed reasonably well? Do you know at what point um, that took out off and how the rest of his backlist is done? Because uh, doing well at the moment, isn't it? Like he's, he's, he's been doing very well in the last couple of months, so... Yeah, I, I I think it's Breaker's books have have are his. It's obviously his most popular series. Um, I don't know how much. I I think the 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 success for the back stuff has been more recent, maybe in the past few months, because uh, Breaker's is selling a lot more. So I think more people are finding him and starting to read through his back stuff. Um, but I I can't say with any certainty. I I usually don't ask numbers like that of people. So. But I think that his Breaker series was doing pretty well right from the get-go. Um, it's been doing okay. It's, it's doing better it now. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. killing yeah. it at the moment. Like, um, the fourth one has been, you know, doing really low, and then he's obviously bundled the first three now. Um, but they're all they're all novellas, right? No, they're they're longer. Are they full novels. Yeah. They're about yeah. fifty thousand, or are they seventy thousand words? I can't remember. I read. I'm not one. sure of the actual I number. I they're numbers. long. They're, I mean, they're not you know fantasy length long, but they're yeah. regular. You know, a Dean R. Koontz book size. Yeah, I read the first one. I just don't know what the what the word count was. But it's, it didn't seem that long, but it was a fast, easy read. So I thought they were maybe about fifty k or something. Well, there you go. Oh. <laughs> Another blockbuster show. <laughs> I could talk about this kind of light stuff and numbers and stuff for hours, but I'm sure people aren't going to be that interested. Um, let's see what people in the comments are saying, because there's a shitload of them going on. Uh, Garrett said Dave's very concerned about length. Um, Eric uh, <laughs> Gwinden said, for me, my most successful book was my second series or fourth book. I suspect cover and topic had most to do with that, though. Um, there's a whole conversation going in there. Um, just, 
anything else in there that anyone spotted? It's moving pretty quickly over there. So. Derek said God hasn't actually sold that many books, but his ghostwriters have. <laughs> um, yeah, keep talking because I'm trying to actually find it, see if anyone actually said anything uh, about other books and stuff about pricing. All right, Dave, vamp. Vamp. <laughs> I'm looking through the comments. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to have a whole show of us reading comments. <laughs> yes, let's read them out loud, one at a time. <laughs> um, Ari Lessie has posted a link from uh, KKR. Um, she's done... Uh, uh, there's a... Uh, back to the, the, the Dr. Jim Taylor guy. Um, done a blog post about his post. Oh, where he apologizes? Um, or, no. Well, the title of the post is Told by an Idiot, number six. So I haven't actually read it. <laughs> it's, it's in there if anyone wants to go have a look at it. Um, okay. If anyone has anything else they want to add to that or us, get us to come back to it, let us know. Otherwise, um, I'm going to move on to Chrissy's story, um, which the only reason I'm talking about this is to pretty much um, make jokes at people like Johnny and Garrett for being Arab again, cockmen. Um, Narcissism breeds belief is the title. And Chrissy's not here. She thought she'd help us out by passing a posting a story. It's just like, um, basically, uh, have you ever? Um, basically, the idea is: Have you ever been in a group or a class or anything where there's you know a lot of arrogant people in there? Um, and uh, the whole basis is basically, um, you know, are those people better at um, being creative? Are they, do they gain more attention? Are they more popular? I, guess I don't know. I mean, they're, they're arrogant. are you guys anger, angry and arrogant and stuff? Yeah, a little bit. I'm, I'm not arrogant. <clears throat> no, Garrett Darren's Robinson not. is. <laughs> Garrett is an arrogant mongoose. <laughs> <laughs> But he was a meerkat. Um, well, it's true. Like, well, it's, narcissist it's a, and arrogant, they're two it's, different it's things. Different. <laughs> Narcissism is definitely different than arrogance. Um, I don't know. I, I think self-confidence is a big thing. Well, and... it's a fine line between self-confidence and going too far as well, though. Like, I've, I've always been fairly self-confident because of, you know, I've done plenty of stuff. You're a giant cock. I'm a giant cock, yeah. So... Um, <laughs> But you know that there is times when you can easily cross that that line into putting people off. But people do tend to, um, you know, be drawn to arrogant people as much as you know they bitch about it, um, or you know, narcissists. They are the people that tend to get the attention. Good or yeah, if sometimes. kindness and humility were you know considered good qualities, Hollywood would just evaporate into nothingness. <laughs> Yeah, there definitely wouldn't be any uh, reality television shows. <laughs> uh, well, it yeah, sells, it, right? It, that kind of personality tends to sell. So. The, 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 this is interesting because it, it kind of goes with something I've been thinking about um, lately. And I, I, I've been reading uh, a, a book on um, you know, how to write. I don't remember the title of it. Um, but just, you know... Good book. I, I, yeah, yeah. Well, now I always I buy a lot of books, so it's just like general pointers, and I look for ways to improve my writing. And one of the things they're talking about is characterization, and how people tend to like uh, larger than life characters, not average characters. And and I think I think I've seen that play out in in our own books. If if you look at the characters that resonate with people, it's like Baricio, uh, or you know, just various characters that are, you know, larger than life. Uh, that, that character that I thought would resonate most with people was Brent Foster in Yesterday's Gone because he's like kind of like an everyday sort of guy. But he comes off as, you know, weak and whiny, and I think that turned off some people. There are people that do like him, uh, but he's not, you know, all full of confidence. He's not like you know, this guy that people want to be like, emulate. And, and I think that comes into play with not only characters in books. Uh, people want to read about people that are like them, but also people that are better than them. People that have their shit together just a little bit more than they do, or, 
or if they don't have their shit together, they're just really like they're really out there and they do shit that they wouldn't do. Uh, and I think that I think that holds true, and I think that might also hold true for you know authors, uh, you know the quiet authors versus authors that you know are just fucking out there crazy. And I think people like that will get more attention than a quiet author will. So, and you could you could chalk it up to arrogance or narcissism, uh, and, and that could be why people do well. But I think this translate to most of life uh, people people that believe in themselves and you just put their put themselves out there even if they're dicks about it they generally do better than people that are reticent and quiet and you know worried about what other people think well, look at the attention that someone like Tucker Max got uh, obviously he regrets some of the stuff that happened in the beginning but it's the same kind of deal he got a lot of attention and a lot of success because of putting out that personality and 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 doing those kind of things. So I think the lesson here for everybody is if you have children, make them into assholes if you want them to be successful. <laughs> Just plop them in front of MTV all day long and job is done. That's, that was my plan the whole time. <laughs> I thought that was your childhood, you make, Bill. You make, you make, you make, well, you in make, my childhood, MTV actually you make played your, music. Yeah. Do, I, do music... Make, it, it, it meant music rather than meandering bullshit. <laughs> meandering bullshit. Do you, um, do you make your kids watch uh, the Jersey Shore on repeat all day? Uh, <laughs> and give them vocabulary that. lessons to make sure that they're not saying like, words grammatically anymore, correct. Daddy. Funny thing is, though, I have caught my oldest son uh, quoting Pauly D from Jersey Shore. Oh, so, no. I, I, He's, I, on I, track. He's on yeah, track. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> See, I'm out of it that I don't even know who Pauly D is. <laughs> I'm blissfully <Good> unaware. <laughs> Good man. Just keep it that way. Please. But I do think yeah. that Dave raised a valid point about, about um, you know, people identifying with Baricio and characters who are just very focused and you know they have a vision of who they are and what they want their life to be like. And um, I, I think you can go down a list of several characters that are just like that. Um, in the comments, Garrett uh, mentioned um, Patrick Rothfuss's character, yeah, um, from Name of the Wind, and how he's so much smarter and stuff. And you could go all the way back to, like, Sherlock Holmes. It's the same type of thing. Um, and I think that writing those characters is easier because you it allows you to get out of, outside of your head. You're not so hung up on, well, how would I react to this? You're thinking... Well, if I was a serial killer and everything that Mauricio is, then what would I do? And it allows you to find that character's voice easier. Now, on the other side of that spectrum, you have writers like Nathan Lowell, who, you know, he he's very successful with his Quarter Share series. Um, but that series of books, it's amazing how little stuff happens. There's no big, you know, intergalactic war. There's no political intrigue or anything like that. It's just it's a It's like this show. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is we need to start an intergalactic except people, war. <laughs> except people like the books. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to... Uh, so why, wait, wait. Why, I want to know why people like those books. What, what is it about them that people like? Well, I was just about to tell you. Oh, well, excuse <laughs> me. Sorry, Carl. We didn't know that was for your conversation. <laughs> Not the Patrick Rothfuss book, the other one. Well, that's what I was going to point out. Oh, okay, go, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead Arrogant Cockman. <laughs> Better watch that, I'll shut down his government. I was ex <laughs> this is an example of exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to like rudely talk all over all of you to show you how it works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give us your answer, Carl, and then I'll tell you what Nathan Lowell himself said. <laughs> yeah, give us your answer, Carl, then I'll, I'll give the right answer. <laughs> No, you carry on, John. No, I'll no, no. Back. I want Carl to put himself out there and get shut down <laughs> by the truth. Well, I wasn't even going to talk. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> I want to talk about fucking that book, so you carry on. Fucking that I'm book? Gonna... What? Yeah, fucking that book. Is that, that like book. your placeholder? I would, fuck that book. I would fuck that book. Anyway, come back. Come back to me. Come back to me. Go on. Carry okay. on, John. Nathan says that um, he thinks that people enjoy reading stories about the everyday man who's doing 
every new things and seeing how they respond to um, different things. Um, his series, it's about a guy who joins a starship at the lowest position and works his way up till he's owning, you know, he owns the spaceship. And um, as you work your way the through American the books, dream. yeah, as you work your way through <laughs> the books, so you're caught up in, you know, well, is he going to pass this test and how's he going to get the money to do this and that sort of thing. And it's just real, you know, mundane stuff. It's it's like Downton Abbey in space. That's the best way to put it. <laughs> like but, a robot I mean, you know, That's the thing. Why do people like Downton Abbey? You know, they have an entire episode devoted to, you know, they ran out of shoe polish and it's going to be a big scandal or whatever. But people eat that series up because it's about the characters. Again, which, I mean, I think you can tie that into um, exactly what Dave's saying. Um, you know, Barisio is really out there, and people like that. Total id. <laughs> but, you know, the Horatio Wang in um, this Solar Clipper series um, is very together, I guess you would say. But he is who he is, and people identify with that. They identify with the character, and I think they root for him. So I guess the point of that is just writing a character that people can get into and really believe in. So it comes down to write a good book, I guess. Now, if I have any other platitudes I can think of, then I'll spew those out as well. That always comes back to writing a good book, right? So. All right, Carl, you're up to give us your yes, whatever please. you're going to do. <laughs> but you got to turn your All camera right. back on so we can watch the creepers in the background. <laughs> That's my daughter. She's running around <laughs> in the background. Um, look, I was going to talk about Kavoth because he is the perfect example. This Name of the Wind is an exceedingly popular book with what, on first reading, is a very dislikable main character and really doesn't have any sort of thing that redeems him otherwise. He's, he's arrogant. He's, um, he's highly successful. He very rarely fails, and even when he does, he doesn't learn from his mistakes. He just keeps doing the same shit over and over again. Um, and there's no sort of sympathy with that character at all. Um, even the love interest, she's even worse. She's like the biggest bitch in the world. Like, she, she doesn't redeem him. There's no sympathy with her. her. Um, so, yet yeah, that book is as highly successful as it is, and I love that character. And, and when you talk about fantasy and when fantasy gets talked about, um, and that is my genre and I read a lot of fantasy, he gets talked about as one of the best characters in fantasy right now. So it's... Interesting. I was reading some of the reviews on that last night, um, some of the one and two and three star reviews, and a lot of people were bitching about it basically for those reasons. But yet, everything that they were saying was, I love this book, but this guy is like completely, in, uh, uh, you know, not sympathetic, he's too arrogant, like. But yet, I can't I stop reading. <laughs> yet, I can't stop reading this guy, like. Um, and, and I think the answer is um, that that's. People like those kind of people. Like they don't necessarily want to be them themselves, but everyone has one of those sort of people in their lives, and you know they're entertaining, they're interesting, they're you know they're like a leader in a way. They 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 bring a, a excitement and an interest to your life, and I think that's why people are drawn to those sort of people. They don't want to do it themselves, but they're quite happy for someone else to make themselves look like an ass and entertain them and you know lead them towards things and being the one that's going to go and tweet celebrities and, you know, do all this kind of stuff. And now I'm attacking ZC Belgium. That's why everybody loves Omar on the wire. Total badass. Exactly. Everybody was afraid of Omar and, you know, you know, that's not a guy you'd want to be, but god damn, would you want to be him? Yeah! <laughs> yeah, exactly, and that's the yeah. thing. Like, you've all got that friend that you, that you probably wouldn't want to act like or be like him because of your own moral compass or... Sean whatever. Platt. Like, He's way too yeah. nice. <laughs> but... But in saying that, you still kind of part of you is still kind of jealous of how they are, or you would like to do some of the stuff that they do. And I know plenty of people like that, um, and I think that's the case. So when you find a character like that, people do identify to it. Hey, we need to end the show because we're getting close to breaking the record comments that was set on the episode that I hosted. So. Um... <laughs> 
So... Yeah, but how anyway. many comments are actually related to the show in any way? I think the people are just talking amongst themselves. They, they don't come here for us. We're like background <laughs> chatter. They're talking That's about... A- <laughs> it's like it's like one of those AOL chat rooms. You're just hanging out. And you see a lot of people like, hey, what's your Wait, age? AO, what? AOL <laughs> chat room? What the hell? You're still on AOL, Bill? Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> ASL. They're wow. all just doing A. <laughs> yeah, H slash S slash L. Awesome. Uh, we do have some people, uh, some new people in there. Um, Mary's been a couple of times. Um I don't know who MW123 is. That seems like a new viewer. Um, we have Ari. Uh, she She's popped up in the last couple of weeks, and she's been posting some pretty interesting stuff over in the chat. <laughs> uh, mostly about how awesome I am. Garrett, uh, I think so. Dave's eyes are dreamy. <laughs> you mean hallucinogenic? <laughs> <laughs> he hypnotizes people. Yes. I was trying to explain to my son what hypnotizing was tonight because we were reading a book that had a hypnotist in. I was trying to find a way to explain it so a six-year-old would understand. Three Stooges episodes. So yeah, well, finally, like I'm, I'm sitting there trying to explain it in like some scientific way, and, he, and then he says, and then he says, "Oh, you mean it's like a spell being put on you?" I'm like, "Yes, that's perfectly." <laughs> <laughs> wow, thank you. <laughs> I felt so dumb at that moment. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, we've got a couple, couple more stories to quickly get through. One I particularly wanted to Wait, share. Wait, there's more think. stories? Are you kidding me? Well, this isn't really a story, but this is, I think, Jesus, um, something. Jesus, that's the episode over. that will not end. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be quiet. I'll if it's you. my story, don't read it. <laughs> it's not. Uh, okay. Okay. I just posted the link to it, and I think everyone um, who is a writer, which I think pretty much everyone in the chat is. Um, well, are they really it. writers or are they tinkerers with words? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, a website um, titled The Future of Storytelling and uh, it's a bunch of professors and um, other um, professionals that are running a online course for writers um, teaching the mechanics of uh, fiction, uh, fiction formats and how to st- tell stories. Do you want to un- analyze and understand um, and create stories and narratives, um, and there's a video there, um, and there's a whole b- a bunch of stuff that you can expect from it. They're getting about 2,000 sign-ups a day. It's completely free. Um, wait, 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 wait. Somebody's putting together something of use and of value to people, and they're giving it away for free, not locking it behind a paywall for their secret fucking membership club? Wow! Yes. And they're prof- like you know, I don't, uh, I don't know. Bravo. These people, but there's some professors in there, and Brandon Sanderson does the same thing. He te- he he's a fantasy author, and he teaches creative writing at BYU University, and he puts all of his lectures and the college level lectures up. Yeah, on l- listen to that, you authors out there charging hundreds of dollars for your secret fucking membership club. You're all a bunch of fucking parasites. <laughs> That's all. That wasn't the reaction that I was <laughs> expecting, but... Is but there yeah, anyone you'd like to mention? Nobody this I'd San- like to mention by name. I would not want to give them any more attention than they already get by being on this planet and breathing. I think Garrett got the message. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Anyway, not anyway, I actually do think this would be of value for a lot of people. I mean, it, I... It's, I think it's closing in four or five days to sign up. Um, they're getting a lot of people. I think it's worth everyone signing up. And if you don't get anything from it, then don't continue. But I would hate for anyone to miss out on the chance to, to get some really good um, content. And um, Oh, I'm sure you can get the content regurgitated by some asshole selling it under a $200 lock and key thing. You probably could. <laughs> but anyway, if anyone wants to sign yeah, up. Yeah, sign up. Now... <laughs> um, I certainly think you should. Um, and the last one, just because we never talk about him on the show, um, Will Howie. Uh, Will Howie. Will uh, Howie. Howie. <laughs> he just named might Will. as well just change his fucking name to <laughs> Will Howie. Um, that guy, uh, you know who I'm talking about. He he posted a video um, as he got the Japanese proofs of wool and they're pretty nice looking they had some sort of anime type covers and obviously in Je- um, printed in Japanese they look pretty cool um, and the other thing he's got out they'll be on Carl's little thing behind them next week <laughs> well I do on display bit, so, um, 
anyway, um, and the other thing that I wanted to share, if you're wait, into wait, wait, I want to, I want to make a comment here. Uh, Every single week, Carl is posting stories about you, Howie. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Tonight, that's not always me. Tonight, <laughs> tonight, uh, during this show, he said that he's never read any of you's books. Yeah, he did. No, I, I have. I've read all of Wool, and um, I've got uh, and and she hadn't read the other read, books. I haven't. I haven't read the the previous books. The oh, okay. Ones. Before you're yeah, allowed read. to post another story about the man, you have to go read one of his other titles. Fine, whatever. <laughs> well, I, I, does does the Wool graphic novel count? <laughs> That's a different. Well, anyway, uh, that's the other thing I was going to post there. They've got a special preview edition of the Wool graphic novel up, um, which I thought looked really amazing. I, I read it the other day. I posted it in there. But what's interesting, that's obviously part of Amazon's new imprint, so you can sort of see the quality of what um, potentially the graphic novels that they'll be putting out, and maybe in the future doing self published uh, um, options, or maybe some sort of deal with opening up to more people than they've got now. So if anyone wants to check it out, go have a look. Um, you can get the, the special preview edition for free on Amazon.com. I think I figured out the, 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 the difference between people that have things of value versus parasites. It, and that is a lot of people, a lot of people like Hugh, Howie, David Gogren, and others, you know, they give back to the writing community uh, freely, freely, all the time they give back. And other people that maybe don't have so much value, that have lots of platitudes and such, they, they charge people for the real information, the secret information. That's all. Dave, <laughs> look, I will tell you what I was going to charge you for. You, know, you can just drop it already. Yes, this is all my attack on John Ward. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, I'm just... Forget it. I'm off my meds. Uh, I would just like to um, point out that the comment record has been smashed. Yay! We're at 447 live comments. 448. I'm just going to keep reading them, so keep posting. So, 451. <laughs> 500, 500 gets a free Realm Keepers book. <laughs> Aren't they all free? What? No, I paid for mine. Oh, you're a fool, then. He just <sighs> gave them to us. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We we did pay for the books a lot, so there you go. Which I 40, don't have. Forty nine ninety nine plus shipping. <laughs> Ari said, "Oh, Dave, it's not as fun when you don't say it in your angry voice." I'm sorry. I, I... you wouldn't like him when he's angry. <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> I was gonna say, how many dates has Dave been on that he's heard the same thing? <laughs> Well, yes, the ladies love my anger. <laughs> the original bad boy. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway. If you really want to see me angry, though, maybe I should start a, a, a secret membership club. But, but when you join it, when you join it, you get to watch me watch Televangelist on TV. <laughs> That would be worth would, something. Was it, wasn't I Johnny brainstorming that for you, Dave? <laughs> Maybe he was. I guess really? I owe him 10% cut now. <laughs> I would definitely pay you for that. All right. Well, we've been going an hour. Um, I guess we'll wrap this shit up. Um, Gar Garrett anyone... said, what I think is hilarious is that the members of SPRT often accuse me of terrible business practices. Dave automatically suspects it's true even when they're totally joking. <laughs> Or are they? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm just asking the question, so, you know, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> no, the only thing I ha the only negative thing I would ever say about uh, Garrett Robinson is not even about Garrett, it's about ZC and his Kickstarter. But I'm over that, too, so. <laughs> yeah, no. We're only teasing. Garrett is a very um, legit. Gar Garrett, Ga of, all, of all the authors that. Uh, you know, have been listening to uh, self-publishing podcast and interacting with us, you know, for, you know, the past, I don't know how long it's been, over a year, I would say Garrett is probably the, the, the one that really has his shit together and works his ass off and just puts a lot of books out there. So I have nothing but respect for Garrett and Zach, so. 
Why don't you just go to a podcast with him instead? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I want to talk to the motherfucker. <laughs> oh wait, I do. I do that game at Geeks thing with him. Shit. Yeah, oh. this is not really a podcast. So, what did you guys Whoa. think about this week's episode of Shield? I actually like. They it this already week. did this show. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try and get don't try and get the short version out of Dave, so you don't have to sit through the same hour that I did. <laughs> Please, you were at work. Like wait, you had wait, anything wait, better wait. to do? I want to know how many dates Dave has been on that he's heard that same thing. <laughs> don't try to get the short version out of us. You don't have to sit through the same hour. Uh, it's even worse because we're still live. Um, <laughs> All right, look, if anyone wants to come on for our usual after-party hangout, um, let Mr. Ward know in the comments. And he'll yeah, Ar- Ari, uh, I don't know what your Gmail is, but if you want to join us for a live chat. Uh... Well, she's she's about as crazy as I am because it's 3 in the morning where she is in the UK. Where is she at? Oh, okay. She does what I... Uh, so what? I'm uh, up all night, too. How's that crazy? That's normal, man. It's not for crazy. Us, I want... For us, our I said... I stay up and watch Better Off and Dead till three. Yeah, you I'm, you don't sleep I'm at all. More than anyone, so. <laughs> I'm the crazy one. Um, but if anyone wants in, uh, send a message. Um, all right, and, I guess uh, I'll join. John will send. <laughs> Dave will be there. I don't know about Bill. <laughs> no, I don't tell there. people that they won't show up. <laughs> well, they they will show up if you're there. So yeah. just reply to John's little message, and uh, we'll see you in a minute. Thanks My for listening. My little message. Again. <laughs> yeah, it's little. That's what your wife keeps telling me. Um, Whoa. That was a joke. Um, um, okay, so that's the end of the show. Wait, um, Gar- Garrett's I, I hitting all the women Bill. in our chat. Don't yeah. invite Garrett. <laughs> Trish! Trish is there. Um, okay, so I expect, this, expect Bill and, uh, sorry, Chrissy and Wade to be back next week, and we'll see you then. Maybe. Maybe.